Welcome back, Moral Gamers. Today, we're taking a look at Marvel vs. Capcom 2. This is an arcade classic coming at you, originally for Dreamcast, and then for Xbox Original, PlayStation 2 as well, then for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. So how is this one going to stack up? Let's find out. First things first, back in the day, Capcom was into fighting. That's all they really did well back in the 90s. And so what'd they do? Well, you had the Street Fighter series, you had the Darkstalker series, and oh yeah, they got licensed from Marvel to do X-Men. And then they, with the popularity of X-Men Children in the Atom, they said, oh, let's do Marvel superheroes. Wait, idea, let's do a mashup. X-Men versus Street Fighter. And so they did that one, which was actually a really good tag game. And then they did Marvel, um, uh, Capcom versus, Marvel versus Capcom 1, excuse me. Marvel versus Capcom 1. And so, with those games, they all was building up to this right here, which is Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which is a roster of over 30 characters spread across from Street Fighter, Darkstalkers, Mega Man, and then you have X-Men, you have Avengers, you have random Marvel heroes and villains that I don't know what comic book they're from, but hey, they're in here. They're even police, you know, characters I haven't heard of, like Thanatos, who's kind of a cheap little jerk there. Nevertheless, though, the game basically takes a tag-based approach where after you pick your three characters, you can have any of your reserve characters pop in, do a quick hit, jump out. Great, they can assist you. Or you can swap those characters and you can use that as a way of extending combos or if you're in a fight and your character's getting low on health or something like that, swap to a different character so the reserve character can recover. Cool. If you're really technical and really good about it, you can charge up your super meter and you can unleash a tri-powered attack, basically one after another for extended amounts of damage to the enemy. So you can have one character jump in, do a super, next character jumps in, does a super, next character jumps in, finishes the super combo. It's a great way to whack up the hits, but again, it takes time to master these things and really figure out which characters work. So is this the right game for you? And if you're casually playing with friends, this is actually a very fun one to casually play with friends because, hey, it, it's got a low learning curve to some degree, and you can really just get in and mash buttons and have some level of success. But as you play through just the arcade campaign, or if you go online and play against other people, it really gets down to the nitty gritty, and there's a training system in here to help you, but for the most part, though, you're really going to need to take time to learn the ins and outs of the system before you can actually have a fair amount of success in this game. So, did I enjoy it? Um, I did when I was younger. Now it just kind of annoys me because I don't have the time to get into all the nitty-gritty of this fighting game. Uh, still, it is, a, it is a fun game, it is a good game, and I would recommend it from a gamer standpoint. Morally speaking, uh, this game contains martial arts combat, it contains some demonology, characters like Akuma and stuff like that, uh, that harness the power of demons in order to uh, unleash their attacks. Murigan herself is the succubus, which is a form of demon. Um, there's magic use in it, uh, through some of the X-Men characters and stuff like that. Uh, the X-Men characters themselves all have powers, so you got issues with any of that kind of stuff, you, you definitely want to stay away from this game. Other than that, though, it takes comic books, puts them in a fighting game, and that's that's money to Capcom right there. What was that?